Welcome back everyone to another episode of How To Get Good. Now today is going to be about negative and positive AoEs and also a rather challenging one which is not negative unless you stay out of it. So that's a relatively new mechanic that came in in Somerset but we're going to explain that more in a little while. And I'm also going to go over how you can change the visuals so it's easier for you to see. Now first of all Regardless of how many people think they're clever, people stand in stupid all the time. They stand in negative AoEs and get wiped. It doesn't matter how good they think they are and how many people they take the mick out of on the internet. Everybody stands in stupid. And I'm going to show you how to avoid it. So, in some situations, you may have a AoE on the ground, which may be like this. Nice big circle. And that's quite easy to avoid because of the size of it, if it lands on you, you know, to get out of it. Or, you know, to move out of it or whatever. Sometimes that could be an initial hit, which you might have to block and then get out. Sometimes it could be just damage over time or a snare, which means you need to dodge roll out of it. Sometimes it could be a one shot and if you go anywhere near it, you're dead. There could be lots of different things that could uh, be affected by this particular shape of an AoE. But they're not this size all the time. Sometimes they're very, very small in case of like a beast trap. So it can just catch you there and you're stuffed. Sometimes it could be this size. Sometimes it could be this size. And sometimes it can be even bigger. Now, how do you spot these apart from the obvious, this kind of stuff? Because you might not see all that. You might have your settings down if you're on PC. You might not be paying attention. There might be loads of lights going off and loads of funky stuff and you can't really make out what's going on. Well, you have AoE colors. You have positive and negative. Now, it's going to look something like this. This is a positive AoE because I've made it green. If it was a negative, it would have a different color depending on what you chose for it. Now the way to set this up, because so many people don't know this, is you go into your options, you go down to gameplay, and if you scroll down, you'll see friendly color AOE. This you can change to whatever you like. But not only that, just in case you aren't sure of what it looks like on the character, you can actually test it. So if you change the color to anything you like, lots of people like pink, you can alter the actual visual for it, but you have to accept it, obviously. Accept. And you can change it to anything you like. So, if you've got heals coming in, you've got positive synergies, perhaps, because some of them do show an AoE. You've got um, maybe stuff like Holofang, anything like that that's running that is a friendly AoE, especially heals in PvP as well. You can set it to what you want. And the same goes for enemy color as well. Now, I have mine set to blue because a lot of enemies... Uh, tend to be quite hard to spot in certain content, especially if it's red on a lava map. But you can have this to anything you want. So you set your enemy color. And you pick whichever color you want. And you can also alter the brightness of it. You can have it almost gone. Or you can have it really, really bright and in your face, which I tend to do most of the time anyway. Now, now that you know the difference, you know that this color, which I usually have as blue actually. A bluey, very light blue. And I have this for friendly. Green is obviously stay in it. Blue is obviously get the hell out of it. So that part is fixed. You now know how to do this. Now, if you're on PC, by the way, and you're not using the control pad, very much the same thing, except you go in your options here. Go into settings, go into gameplay, and here, same applies. You have your color here. Here's your color wheel. Pick it. Job done. And then you can, of course, test it. The color is up to you. I've seen lots of people on live stream complaining about what people's colors are. Whose eyes are using these? Yours are. So you decide what you want it to look like. And if it works for you, brilliant. If it doesn't work for somebody else, who cares? It's not their game. They can change their own colors. Now that we've known the difference between the positive and the negative, as far as your color settings are concerned, now you need to know the difference between the negative AoE and the enemy AoE that you need to stay in. So... The negative stuff is the color that you've set. The other type is actually usually set to orange by default, and it's not something you can change. There are mechanics in Cloudrest, Black Rose Prison, and there's a couple places elsewhere as well, where you have to, actually in VSS, so uh, Sunspire, 
you will see an AoE on the ground. And it could be on a player. It could be in a position. Whatever. If it is orange, you need to stack up. And you need to get your friends in there. Because the more people in there, the less damage each individual person takes. The less people in there, whoever it is on, or whoever's in there, or whoever's surrounding it outside even, because it could damage people outside, are going to take more damage. So, prime example of that is Sororia in Cloudress. She will have a circle under one of the players. And no matter where they run, it's going to chase them. You need more people to hug that person. When we were testing this at Zenimax Online Studios, when we actually went there to test Somerset originally, um, that's when we called this mechanic Group Hug. Because basically, you need to hug up and split the damage. Now, we have the perfect enemy here. This nasty, horrible harvester is going to throw out some AoEs. And you need to watch the effects, basically. So I'm going to keep that on her just so she doesn't kill me. That one you have to block. This, look at that. Don't stand in those explosions. That will hurt. So that one is obviously quite straightforward. Need to recast this before she kills me. Watch carefully. See that? Very obvious what's coming. But if you're really, really close, that's tricky. Because you might not actually have enough time to get out of the way. So if you're melee based and you know that's coming, you might want to get around the side of her. Now, this is obviously a mechanical case where you need to learn what each enemy does. But just be aware of where the AoEs are and where your feet are. If you keep running into that stuff all the time, first of all, you're going to piss off the healer. And secondly, you're just going to be dead all the time. You don't want that to happen, obviously. So let's kill her real quick. With an ice comet. Why not? Excellent. Now, it's quite easy to see what's going on if you have your colors set to the way that works for you. If I had that set to something like a really dull color, that probably wouldn't have been as easy to see. And in some areas, especially areas that are full of one particular color, it can be quite tricky if you choose the wrong type. So if you're in a, a red area, maybe it's full of lava, you don't want your AoEs to be red. If it's an ice area, you definitely don't want it to be really bright, almost white. So, you've got choices. It's entirely up to you. But just remember the difference between the negative one and the positive one. Myself, I have blue for the light up uh, negative, and I have green for the lit up positive. Just remember, of course, it's not just circular AoEs that land. There are cone effects. There are cleaves. There's lots and lots of different stuff. The main thing you want to do above all is stay out of it. Unless it's bright orange and it's a mechanic where you have to hug up. Now, this particular mechanic you cannot solo. But you do need to pay attention to it. So be very, very aware of this while it's happening. See that cone there? Avoid that, obviously. Now, what we want is the circle AoE that she puts on me. This one here. This spreading AoE. That will kill you. So, what you can see there is Roaring Flare. That is what she just killed me with, and that was a spreading AoE. How do you avoid that? It's stuck to me. Well, the only way to avoid that is to get your friends to stack with you. Now, when I say the mechanic is actually orange, it's orange to other people. So, if it's on you, it will look like it's a basic negative effect and it's spreading. It's going to explode. That is going to explode. But this particular one, you have to hug up with your friends. Same with Sunspy, you have to hug up. And the same with Black Rose Prison, you have to hug up as well. It's called the, the group hug mechanic. Now, to you, like I said, you'll see it just normal. To other people, they'll see a bright orange color and they all have to hug up to you. Now, if it is attached to the floor, of course, everybody needs to get here. If it's attached to you, everybody needs to get to you. So do not run away. Otherwise, everybody does this and tries to chase you. And by the time they've got there, boom, you're dead. Now, just to visually demonstrate this again so you can see the difference there are some frontal cone aoe's that we need to avoid here so we need to be careful so avoid that otherwise it'll knock you over and or hurt depends on the mechanic itself and this won't even save you either corrosive armor or magma shell doesn't matter if you think you're big enough you will die demonstration proven i know lots of people keep trying to tell me that you can survive that you can't and this is on normal by the way on vet you're definitely dead so, there is a difference with those types of AoEs, and it was all about your group coordination as to how well they go. Literally, at the moment, there's only three of those mechanics in the game, so don't panic too much. Um, but I'm sure more will come in the future. 
Now, there are some AoEs in the game that are attached to you that don't spread and explode. There are some that literally just stick to you and run their course. Now, those ones you need to be very, very careful with. And this is where it comes into um, certain mechanics like Sanctum Ophidia, where you have overcharges or you have the trolls. Now, the overcharge will put a big lightning AoE on you and it will stay on you and just do damage. And the poison will stay on you and just do damage. But if you touch somebody else... What's going to happen? You're going to hurt them. So, yes, there is a learning curve to staying out of stupid. 99% of mechanics actually need you to get out. However, very few mechanics require your friends to join you, and very few require you to stay away from people. Now, mostly those tactics or situations tend to come into play in trials. So, vet... Trials are probably your most punishing because normal you can usually survive it But on vet especially pay attention to your feet Don't be selfish don't go running into all your friends because you've got damage on you It's no good you having a big lightning AOE on you from an overcharger and going oh my god Oh my god heal me heal me you're running out of heals right now Stay where you are or position yourself into a place where you can survive or heal and not be a burden to your group Now the difference between standing in stupid and avoiding stupid is some stuff is on the ground some stuff is attached to you, and some stuff comes from the sky. Now, if it's coming from the sky, and it's placed on the ground, you can step out of it. If it's just placed on the ground, you can step out of it. If it's coming from the sky, and it's attached to you, you are the target, and it's a lock-on, then you have to block it, or you need to move so it lands in front of you, or behind you. Those mechanics, again you will have to pay attention to and learn individually. Most of those dangerous mechanics come into play in a lot of trials, not so much dungeon content, although there are a couple. Also, there's a lot of mechanics where spreading AoEs will explode, but you mustn't hug up. You have to separate. A prime example of that is the boss in Falkreath Hold, the massive, massive bone colossus. He will bring down an ice comet onto each individual group member. In an AoE about that big. Maybe a bit bigger, actually. About the size of the Death Royalty. Each one will spread, and when it finishes, it will pop. If you block it, the meteor landed on your head won't kill you. But if the circle of you and the circle over somebody else overlaps and touches your person, you blow up. So, there are many different situations where you'll have to alter your position and mechanical awareness depending on what is coming. So, standing out of stupid is not always as simple as it seems, but it is a learning curve. The simplest one is if stuff is there, don't bloody step in it. There are lots of different situations where you could get stunned, snared, dotted, nuked. Just know your target. But above all, do not stand in negative effects on purpose unless the mechanic requires it. Because if you do, you are deliberately making it difficult for your group. Yes, some people take longer to learn than others. But some people are very complacent and they just go running in and expect the healer to keep them alive. Expect away, you're going to die. So, hopefully that helped. Hopefully it wasn't too boring. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of how to approach these particular mechanics. I know some of it can be quite confusing. But remember, you can make it easier on yourself by changing the colours to your own AoEs. And don't worry about getting killed by them to start with. If you get killed by something, you're on the road to learning how it works. If you get killed by it all the time, you're not learning anything and you need to practice. So, first of all, thank you very much for watching. A huge appreciate support. If you are not subscribing, please do hit that button. It is free. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when videos are uploaded. Now, if you want to help support outside the channel, there are some links in the info section for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, and of course the website, zynodegaming.com, where all the written guides are as well. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.